Hey folks, another Kickstarter game came in. It's called Mysthea. We're gonna unbox it and take a look at it right after this. Hey YouTube, this is Pipe Tech, and I actually just got back from a fish convention, and this arrived Friday, so. So I had a lot of fun at the convention, but I did have to spend the whole weekend kind of wondering what was in store for me when I opened this box. Miss Thea is a Kickstarter exclusive game, and uh, I'll dig more into like what the actual game's like and stuff like that. This is gonna be sort of a superficial look at, at the components and look inside. I have read the rule books to this and I've watched some tutorials. It's not exactly cemented in as far as like exactly how to play. But I've got kind of a general idea for how it's going to go. So that sounds great, but this won't be like an objective review of the game itself or anything. More just kind of a first look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint these up. I'm going to play it. And if it's uh, any account, if it's exciting, and I want to tell you guys all about it, then I'll be back. I might at least be back to show you the, the miniatures painted, which I'm excited to do. But for now, I thought it'd be cool just because I just arrived and I haven't seen many videos like this. I thought it'd be neat just to kind of pull it out and show you what the game's all about. I guess the first thing to mention is this art book. Uh, I believe this came with a deluxe, with the deluxe package, if you backed at the deluxe level. And uh, it has got some really, really stunning artwork in this. It's gonna be especially handy when you go to paint. There are little sidebars here with all kinds of uh, little details about the lore, and it goes into each of the characters that are in the game, and that sort of thing. I do think it's gonna be a, a terrific reference for painting. So when I go to paint like this fella, for instance, I'll know exactly how uh, the artist intended for them to look. So that's just kind of a neat little add-on, the uh, art book. Now as for the box itself, it looks really nice. Ours here in, a, in the US were shipped with the ship naked. I did actually get a bit of a ding on my box. You can see right there. Uh, that's the only damage I could see with this, but I did, it looks like it got a little smashed on the corner there, and hopefully that won't be a big deal. Uh, the box itself looks really neat. It's got a it's got a nice sheen to it. The cardboard seems thick and sturdy. It seems like a, an expensive game, just like holding it. Uh, it's also very heavy. <laughs> it's a heavy box with uh, obviously a lot of stuff inside. So let's let's take a look inside of it. Let's see. All right, so here we have the game. All oh, it's boxed. Art glory. And uh, right here we have presumably one of the player boards. This does play up to five people. Here's another player board. Here's some chits. And uh, this is one of the islands. This has four islands that kind of float around. That came out really easily. Uh, looks really clean. Yeah, really nice finish on this. It's a little shiny, when I, but I've got like studio lights on it here. And uh, some other little tokens. Can't remember off the top of my head what these are for. <laughs> just from uh, reading the instructions, just kind of casually taking a look at those. Uh, some more player boards. More player boards. Looks like uh, an instruction book. Nice four color instruction book. Of course, you know how well it works. A lot to see. Uh, I have looked at the PDF version of this, so I kind of have an idea of what's going on. I, I won't lie to you folks, this seems, uh, it seems pretty deep. Like, I think once you know how to play it, it probably won't be too bad, but I am a little bit intimidated by this one because it obviously has a whole lot of stuff going on. There's a whole lot of thought put into it. Uh, like here's all the cards for different things. Yeah, that's the rule book. And it looks like right here we have uh, the board itself. that up and take a look here. That looks really nice. 
nice little area for your cards and stuff on the side. Looks like probably a points track around the outside. And this is where the islands go. Good quality cardboard. It actually has some, there's some printing on the back, which is neat, completely unnecessary, but pretty cool. So yeah, there's the board that looks cool. We got some more player boards, probably a little tableau for the cards, and stuff like that. Uh, here we have the islands. Again, these are really nicely done. They come right out of here. Not seeing a lot of like little stuff around the edges. Cardboard looks good. Really nice. Nice, nice, nice. They pop right out, no problem. Love it. And now you kind of get down into the meat and bones of what uh, pushes this Kickstarter and, and probably pushes a lot of different Kickstarters, and that is the miniatures. I was a little worried about the quality of miniatures uh, coming out. Like a lot of, I bought a lot of Games Workshop stuff and I bought, uh, you know, maybe some stuff from Mantic. And I thought, you know, um, man, I hope that these approach the quality of those. And they absolutely do. I'd say you've got you got the aspect of it being fully assembled, which is kind of like the, the, a lot of the, the Walking Dead Mantic miniatures and stuff, but the detail on these, the detail on these is just striking. I mean, there's really, really nice, nice attention to detail and they pull it off. Like a lot of times you, you don't see it, like you're really going to see an expression on this person's face. And uh, if you're a good enough painter, you'll be able to really pick out all the really interesting things going on in this. Of course, we've got a row of heroes here. Like, look at the face on that shield. But the detail in all of these is pretty amazing. Uh, the one thing that starts to kind of fall off the wagon is a couple of them have these little staffs. And they're a little bendy, which can be easily fixed with maybe a little bit of heat, some patience and careful bending. You can get that put back. But each of these heroes, really, really nicely done. Really beautiful sculpts. This guy was especially, you know, especially bendy little uh, hammer thing, but he's kind of this wild moss covered robot. But that's what it looks like from the artwork. These are going to be a lot of fun to paint. Uh, they don't have any detail on the base, but boy, up here, up here it's nothing but detail. Really, really amazing. I want to do all the heroes. There's a number on the bottom too. Hmm. I think there's two more heroes. This lady and then another one. Nice butt. Oh yeah. Really good. These are like the twins. I don't know their entire story. I've, I've looked through the, the little, the art book and kind of got familiar with some of the, you know, some of the concepts, but I haven't finished reading it. And of course you've got the big monsters. And uh, you know, what's funny is, I guess looking at all the 3D renders, I thought these would be bigger. But these are very much like that 28 millimeter Warhammer 40k scale. And then these are kind of like maybe the bigger monsters you'd see in Warhammer. But uh, they are real monsters. They're quite a bit larger than a normal person. Of course, this one's the one they sent around a lot. A bunch of these are ones that they just unlocked as the campaign went by. Really, really interesting, weird, weird monsters. <clears throat> Here's another one. Now, like stuff like this guy, I cannot wait to paint it. I'm like, I'm actually genuinely excited to see what these look like, kind of brought to life with paint. 
and a little bit of uh, imagination and detail. Another one that's just gorgeous. I've got th three more monsters, and then the rest of these guys, um, the rest of these guys are more or less minions. They're kind of minions to these heroes uh, that I showed you first. And so during the campaign, they unlocked uh, they unlocked a lot of extras, extra poses. So I guess they would have had, you know, as well as monsters like this, you know, I guess they had a couple of these monsters that you could have played. Like if it hadn't done as well, there maybe would have been four or five of these monsters. And all of these guys would have been the same. Because I think that uh, from this row here, these three rows, these are all the same. But they're different, look, they're different poses, which is always neat and more interesting, right? There's one. That actually looks the same. Oh, so there's two two poses in this group. And there's the second one. Kind of neat little rock fellows. Also in here we have some cards. There's a big card mechanism in this game. It also has a lot of icon iconography, <laughs> which helps it be sort of language independent, which is handy because this is uh, this is another game that was shipped all over the world. Um, there's some Japanese on the back. I'm not exactly sure which cards these are or what they do, so I'll have to wait, explain this sort of thing later. Uh, we have base covers. There, there are different colors. I see there are other colors down below here too. This one's black. These, of course, will go over the bases so you can tell which of your minions are, are which. And here on top we have what appear to be sort of like sleeves. Sort of like weird envelope sleeves. Um, might be for a particular faction or to save the game. You know, I, I cannot, can't recall that from the rules, so I'll have to go back. I think the rules I was looking at were beta rules too, so I might not even have the most current rule set in my mind. Now we dig into the bottom of the box here. Now these guys, these are tiny little guys. So these little fellows are more minions. Uh, I guess they're the smaller little rock golems. Oops. They're the smaller little rock golem guys that go with uh, those slightly bigger ones I showed you earlier. There's tons of them. Uh, a couple of different poses, it looks like. Maybe three or four different poses. I actually just hit this thing and knocked them all everywhere. There's at least three poses in here. And lots and lots of little fellas, which is fun. A lot of them were really fun looking too. Really funny little, funny little poses and stuff. This guy's got his hands up. This guy's got a little shield. These will be super easy to paint. These are basically going to be like two layers and a dry brush, maybe, and uh, they'll be painted up. And they're tiny. Oh, they're so little. Uh, also in here, we've got more colors for the different factions. Uh, there are some wood tokens that go with this. This is probably what I'm the least excited about, like uh, these wood tokens that were kind of meh to me, like they could have done... I mean, people do some really creative stuff with like meeples and stuff these days, so. Uh, and we got some other ones for the five different teams. And some more tokens. These will probably go in the different areas on those tracks on the board. Track points and and uh, a number of other things that will be going on. We've got some more cards. I kind of thought there would be more cards than what I'm seeing in here, but... Um, you know, more of the great artwork and stuff and the iconography. Uh, yeah, more cards to go with the game. And a little baggie uh, with, with, with Miss Thea written on it, which I assume is, um, you know, maybe for these wooden tokens or whatnot. There's no dice in here. There's no dice in this game at all. And the last thing that's in the box here, I'm going to kind of dump out 
are reference cards. It looks like there's probably five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So these are reference cards you can pass around. So if people want to kind of look up uh, different card interactions and different things that cards do, uh, this will be a handy little reference guide so you won't be just passing the, the manual around if you need to see it. Now how much you'll need this in the game, I'm sure the first couple of games you definitely need this, but I'm wondering is it so complicated that you'll need this for every game? I don't know. That remains to be seen. Probably the other thing that's cool is like inside of these boxes, you see all these names written? These are all the Kickstarter backers. These are all the people that backed it on Kickstarter. And if you look right, and if you look right there, that's me. Proud Kickstarter backer among many Kickstarter backers. Interesting. And that's it, folks. That's Miss Thea. I'm excited to pull this out, paint it, play it for you, and let you know how it is. <laughs> I'm really excited to play this one. I mean, I'm excited to paint it too, of course, but uh, I am excited to play it because the gameplay did look kind of unique and interesting. My initial hot take, just based on the components and stuff inside, is that, wow, it's a really well put together game. It arrived okay. I mean, mine's a little bit dinged up on the corner, and that's kind of a bummer. But, um, you know, overall, the box isn't ripped apart or anything. There's no big gashes in it. it. It looks good. The miniatures in there blew me away. Like, the detail on the miniatures that are inside of here, I would put easily on par with Games Workshop or some of these other higher-end miniature manufacturers. So if that's something that really gives you a great deal of pleasure uh, when you're uh, considering a board game, like the quality of the miniatures, this one is just, it's excellent. I'm super excited now that I've backed the Volleyfron uh, game too, because it's going to come with like another giant miniature for this. But I got to say right off the bat, I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised at just how nice it really is. So great job, Tabula Games. I'm really excited to, to really get this together and look at it. I cannot wait to paint it. Cannot wait to play it. Uh, really neat game. So I guess my question for you this week is, uh, do you buy games just for miniatures? <laughs> I'm not saying I bought this just for the miniatures, but if I had, there would be no shame in it because they're excellent. But I do wonder how big a part the miniatures play in your decision to get a game. I, I mean, if the min miniatures are super excellent, we figure out what the game is. Or is it the game that's got to be super excellent, and if the miniatures are great, then it's just a good bonus. A lot of games these days really kind of have miniatures just kind of for the sake of having miniatures. But to me, it always adds like another layer of, uh, I don't know, a little, another layer of atmosphere to the game to have an actual visual representation of your character in three dimensions. Especially one that you've care, carefully painted and, and cared for yourself. We'll be back with some more game videos soon. I've got a couple of really cool ideas that I can't wait to show you guys. Uh, but until then, this is Peck Tech signing off. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Until next time, this is Sean inviting you to game on. <clears throat> game on. Game on, young lad. And laddie, laddies. That's all I got for you this week. We'll be more... Will be more. Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and of course, uh, is I've only. <laughs>